What's up, guys? I'm Tanger. I'm a music producer. And today I'm going to be answering your questions for Twitter. This is production support. Tornado EF6 asks, what is your general basis on mixing and mastering? So what I do most of the time is I use Maximus for multiband compression. I put that in front of an OTT on like 20%. After that, I just have an EQ that's cutting out under 40 hertz and above 20k hertz because we can't really hear those frequencies. Run it into a limiter at the end. Cult from YouTube says, what obscure plugins do you recommend? I don't know if these plugins are actually considered obscure or not, but Deep Blue Glitch and Deep Blue Tape Stop are like super clutch plugins and they're super fun. Basically what Deep Blue Glitch does is you can make it have a different effect on every beat. You can do a ton of stuff in Glitch if you're making like dubstep and stuff. It's really fun. Tape Stop is very useful. It's, it's when you hear those songs go barrel. It's like the record stopping. Deep Blue Tape Stop is usually how people get that effect. Ashley asks, how do you go about making a good sounding chord progression? When I was a beginner, what I did most of the time is just study other chord progressions from other songs that I liked. And learning to transcribe chord progressions is a skill in and of itself. It also helps you recognize the patterns in chords and what sounds good and what you like. You know what you can do? You can download MIDI files of songs you like and then just study the chords and how they're made in MIDI so you can see what you can do. Disco says, how the f*** does one make a speed core kick? Speed core kicks are typically just really short kicks with lots of distortion on them. Have a distortion on a kick, put an EQ next, and then put like a peak up, put another distortion after that. You wanna move that EQ peak up and down to see sweet spots and how the distortion affects the peaks differently. It's a really cool thing you can do with distortion. Zol asks, how do you make those groovy chords on some of your songs? Personally, I really like the harmonic minor five chord. And that's basically just taking a normal minor five chord and making it major instead, raising the third. Let's say we start in A, and then we go down to an F, which is the sixth chord, and then we go to E, which is the five chord. That sounds normal on its own. What I do to make it more fancy is start at the A, and then you can go, instead of making this five a normal five chord, you can raise the third, and it adds a lot more tension. Also, what you can do is just add like, add more notes, whether that be in the chord, or between chords, just little, just more is usually better. Buddy2707 asks, what inspired Inuten? Honestly, it was a Picru. I just went on one of those websites where you like create a custom anime girl and I just made one and then just, it just stuck. Danflop asks, what inspired you to create Bike and how do you feel about all the recognition that it got? So I originally made Bike for an audio combat, which is a music contest for Eliminate, which is a music producer. I did sample that bike video. That was part of the contest. Everyone else had to sample a bike video. I didn't actually win. Someone else won. And then eventually, Voxycat made the GD level and sent it to me. And it was small at first, and I thought it was really cool. And then about a month later, I've been seeing it everywhere, and it blows up. I'm really happy it blew up. I got a lot of new fans from that. I'm glad I got to introduce a bunch of people to my community. Carwai asks, how do you usually do your fast dubstep wub sounds for 200 step and J-Core and whatnot to get the wow wow sound? You just have to have a frequency going up and down. So you can use a notch filter. You can use a high pass with a notch. You can use a low pass. So something like this would work. That's like the very baseline, but you can go beyond that and add like distortion, multi-band compression. And if you want a really groovy baseline, you're going to want a lot of like short notes. So that it's like very choppy because more choppy is usually more groovy. Remy Kuka says, how would a total beginner start to get into music production? I would recommend the FL Studio trial because it's really good. You'll have pretty much every tool you ever need at your disposal. The only downside is that you can't save project files, but as long as you leave the file open, it shouldn't be that much of an issue because you don't need to reopen it if you never close it, right? But more importantly than anything, you just want to mess around. Go into your software and just click buttons, make random sounds, and have fun because that's the most important thing. <laughs> Yegox, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, says, How the hell do you extend a song? I run into creative blocks after making the first 20 seconds of a song. I used to have this issue a lot, and you might hear it in a lot of my older music. It's really boring and repetitive, because I just copied and pasted. My friend Day125 once told me, just add a second theme, and it changed my life. If you have one theme, one idea in a song, and you're trying to extend a song, that might be hard when you have one idea and then you add it to another idea. You can experiment with how these ideas mingle with each other throughout the song, whether that be just changing the chord progression up, adding a new instrument, and then usually at the end of the song, you have them both combined. It's like a nice resolution, I guess, to have them both there. I remember Skrillex said this one time, automate, automate, automate. 
three very important things. If you automate stuff and just make them change over time very slowly, it's a very good way to make a boring track more interesting. Exficion says, tips on how to have clean, loud, bright, and sometimes distorted slash crunchy mixes. You need to really take care of your high end. It's tempting to just boost the highs on every single element in your track because it sounds good and it sounds clear. If you just low pass certain elements that don't really need that high sparkle, it'll really make the other elements shine through. As for the loud and distorted part, what I do is, this is probably not good, but I just clip it into a limiter on the master until it sounds distorted enough. Sidosis says, are you an automation sidechainer or a plugin sidechainer? For me, it depends. I use both sometimes. I use the fruity limiter sidechain when I have a track that's not four on the floor. Four on the floor, for clarification, just means there's a kick on every quarter note and usually a hi-hat on the offbeat. This is found a lot in house music and hardcore stuff. With tracks that aren't four on the floor, it's just automated for you and you don't really need that consistency that you need in four on the floor genres. On the other hand, when I'm making four on the floor music, whether that be hardcore or house, I almost always use an LFO tool that ducks it and I can adjust the shape accordingly. I would recommend trying out both, see what you like better. Yuval asks, what's one element of your music that you would say makes it your style? This is a bad habit of mine, but it really defines my style. I use this plugin called Span. It's just a visual plugin. It shows you the average frequency volume over time. I have a bad habit of just trying to make it very flat. Something about me just wants everything to be nice and even. Typically EDM has a lot of bass and a lot of high end. My EDM, I try to just make it flat. I hate dynamics. Thresh from Twitter asks, my tracks often sound empty or like there's a piece missing. What is the best way to find that missing piece? The golden rule that I use is that if your track sounds empty, add more stuff. And that sounds really obvious. Just, you gotta do it. Just try it, because it really works. Just layer things. If you have a bass, add another bass that's playing the same note. If you have a melody, add another instrument that's playing that same melody. If you don't have hi-hats, add some hi-hats. In my song, Bamboo Berry, I remember my lead having like 10 different instruments playing the one melody. And that's how I made the lead so prominent in the track. Gonorrhea STD, <laughs> that's a good name. And they ask, um, how do chords work? And why are they difficult to understand? I'm not the greatest person to ask this question. In my opinion, chords are just a way to convey emotion, a way of building and releasing tension. They really help the track feel like it's going somewhere. Music theory helps a lot. And you should study it because it's fun, but also you don't need it. You can just reference other tracks chord progressions and see what you make. This person asks, do you have any tips on making catchy melodies? Yes, I do. Put your track on loop and hum. If I have a certain hum that goes a certain way, I'll just like, oh, I gotta put that down on an instrument. And that usually is how I make my melodies. Viv asks, as a fellow FL user, do you have any shortcuts or anything that might make certain processes easier? Definitely, make a template. 100% make an FL Studio template. Cause as you can see, mine, well, mine, first of all, it looks really cool. It's like all rainbow and gay and shit. But also, it's like so useful because I can just put a kick on channel 25 and it's automatically rooted to the sidechain channel. And everything on the other channels is automatically on the sidechain. I don't even waste any time. Making a template that fits your workflow is almost always going to benefit you time-wise. It also looks really cool. Ronin67 says, why did you choose a tangerine as a mascot? So there's this flash game made by Gaz Thomas called Tangerine Tycoon. And I played it in fourth grade. I was really good at that game. And it was really fun. Eventually, my username ended up being Tangerine. I would go into certain streamers' chats and they would just call me Tanger for short. And it just kind of stuck. I've never even eaten a Tangerine in my entire life. I've eaten oranges, but not Tangerines. Glitchcat says, how do I vary my sound design more? I want to be more diverse with it. This is kind of obvious, but you just have to try new things. Do things that you wouldn't normally do. Turn knobs that you wouldn't normally turn. And eventually, you'll get something silly. So for example, I can go into the miscellaneous filters and look at band reject. I've never even used this filter in my life. I'm going to turn a knob all the way up. See, that's like, that's already pretty cool. I don't know what you could use that for. Maybe like an acid base kind of thing. If you want to change the result, you're going to have to change the process, no matter how uncomfortable that is for you. Amr asks, is your music will be in the GD music library? <laughs> hey, Rob Top, I'm down if you're down. So Kadu asks, Favorite chord and favorite key to make music in. So my favorite chord is the minor four chord and the major key. You can start in C and then go up to the four, which is F major, and then F minor. It sounds so good. It's very like nostalgic sounding. I don't have a specific favorite chord because chords aren't really anything on their own. It just depends on the context which they're used. As for my favorite key, B 
B-flat minor. I just think it sounds really bright and pretty. Cynthia asks, how do you layer interments? So I don't know if you guys know this, but an interment is when you place someone in their grave. So I guess if you wanted to layer interments, you'd need to place multiple people in the same grave. And I don't know how legal that is, so you'd probably need to do it at night when no one's in. I think they meant to say, how do you layer instruments? So if you think you want to layer one of your instruments, you have to ask yourself what it needs. A very low, mellow piano. And you want to layer it to make it a little brighter. You could make rain an instrument, like put it on a sampler and have the different pitches be the different keys. And then it just becomes a texture that's part of the piano. And I think that effect is really cool. That's all the questions we've got for today, but I hope you learned something new. Um, join the Discord. Stream my latest album that's not out yet. It's called Prefer Not To Say It, and it's out not very soon. It's gonna be a while, but stream it when it does come out. Bye!